Prince Virgin. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's Spurgeon. There's no mistaking Spurgeon. He's about the only real solid binding book I have, except for Streams in the Desert, but I wear that out so often that I replace that one regularly. Spurgeon, it looks pretty fresh, you know. All my books, they come from used stores, so it's a blessing that I like to enjoy because then it's fun to find, I like to say, uh, a pearl of great price in, you know, the fields of the used stores. Because <laughs> others may not know, you know, what may be there, but for me it's like gold. I'm like, ah, oh yeah, grab it. And I think often we don't recognize the things that are important in our life until it's too late. You know, we have our priorities, you know, we set them in order, we do our jobs if we're working. If we're not working, then we look for jobs. If we're not looking for jobs, then we do whatever we're doing. <laughs> But we have priorities that we set as what we do and normally, you know, in our life and exist and go on. But what's really important, you know? Do you stop to think about that at times? Do you enjoy your day? Do you look back at the end of your day and say, hmm, that was a bummer? <laughs> or do you look at it and say, Wow, that was cool. Or is your life just endless repetition of the same old thing every day? Did you know that God never intended for it to be a repetition, but that every day is a revelation? He wants to reveal himself every morning, every noon, and every night to you. He wants to be obvious to you. To me. He wants us to know him like he were sitting right here in this chair right across from me that you can't see. <laughs> and you know, for me, he is there. And he's in my heart. And he's in the things around me that sometimes he uses to speak to me with, to appreciate him with, to consider how the Lord my God loves me. And because he loves me, I know he loves you because you're so much better than I am. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> With all I've been through, I consider myself the chiefest of sinners. <laughs> oh boy. And the most needful of grace. If grace could be frustrated, I would have found the way. But I didn't. How many times do you see that on a camera? <laughs> Somebody sneeze. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Huh. Isn't that awesome? Man, I just... I'm laughing because I'm thinking in my mind, you should keep reading it. I'm thinking, why? They know that I'm not going to do any set routine. <laughs> so, I'm just enjoying it. You know, it is kind of neat, though, that whatever it was that Jesus had, which is the Holy Spirit, the glory that God, the Son of God, the Son of Man had, He's given us. Behold, the superlative liberality of the Lord Jesus, for He hath given us His all. Although a tithe of His possessions would have made a universe of angels rich beyond all thought, yet was He not content until He had given us all that He had. It would have been surprising grace if he had allowed us to eat the crumbs of his bounty beneath the table of his mercy. But he will do nothing by halves. He makes us sit with him and share the feast. Had he given us some small pension from his royal coffers, we should have had cause to love him eternally. But no, he will have his bride as rich as himself, and he will not have a glory or a grace in which she shall not share. He has not been content with less than making us joint heirs with himself, so that we might have equal possessions. He has emptied all his estate into the coffers of the church, and have all things common with his redeemed. 
There is not one room in his house, the key of which he will not withhold from his people. He gives them full liberty to take all that he hath to be for their own. He loves them to make free with his treasure and appropriate as much as they can possibly carry. The boundless fullness of his all-sufficiency is as free to the believer as the air he breathes. Christ has made, Christ has put the flagon of his love and grace to the believer's lips and bidden him drink on forever. For he, for could he drain it, it is welcome to do so, and as he cannot exhaust it, he is bidden to drink abundantly, for it is all his own. What truer proof of fellowship can heaven or earth afford? Whoa! When you elocute such articulation as Chambers doeth, <laughs> you kind of go, huh? <laughs> what? Say that again? Could you kind of like, you know, take it down to my level? Like my wife says. You know, could you please put that in English? <laughs> well, that's English, but American? <laughs> could we rap that? <laughs> Actually, you can rap Chambers, or Chambers. You can rap Spurgeon, but it's a challenge. <laughs> But in reality, Jesus gives us all that he is because he lives inside us and we live in him. In him we live and move and have our being. He didn't hold anything back from us, nor will he. So he becomes our all in all. And he wanted us to be that way because he wanted to demonstrate and has demonstrated in his life in his death is his resurrection and in how he is today what the father is like because he Jesus is the physical representation of God the father his love his giving his openness to sharing all that he has God has given us all that we need for godliness there's nothing he's held back there is nothing that we cannot know and all we need to do is ask. They, in many Christian terms, always like to use this word appropriate, you know, to appropriate this. Well, sadly, when people got used to the word appropriate, they started taking that with much liberality and saying appropriate means getting it without really participating with it. In other words, appropriate can also mean steal if you're not asking permission first. You see, there's a difference. To appropriate something would be to participate with God in sharing it with you and involving Him in how to use it and direct you. To appropriate it without His direction is to steal it. Appropriate does mean both. One side is a negative. And the other side is positive. And so, when they used to say appropriate, all they really wanted you to do was to Make sure that you take all of what God wants to give you into your life and ask Him. If there's something lacking, if you don't have something, ask and you shall receive, Jesus said. If there's something that's missing in your life, He said, look, just knock on the door and it will be open for you. I will make sure of that. Go there. Check it out. There isn't anything that you cannot experience and you cannot know that God will not give you if you seek him and ask him and go with what he tells you to do because Jesus gave all now it may not happen when you want it it may not happen how you want it it may not even happen the way you want it <laughs> but you will look back and see if I'm wrong in this you know quote me if you want to or write me whatever you know get a hold of me bring my neck <laughs> you know I look forward to it but See if I'm wrong in this, that once you have written down what it is that you think you need and you want and desire from the Lord, and you've asked Him and pursued it, then look back a year or two from now and see if He hasn't given it to you. I have done that all my life. And in all my ways and in all my days and everything I've been through, and I've been through some tough stuff. <laughs> that I have always seen God answer all my prayers and he has always come through. He has never left me nor forsaken me. And I'm so in love with him that I just 
feel like I can't stand living in the flesh I am and I feel like I could explode outward and just run to him bare naked <laughs> so to speak in the spirit isn't that what you want? Isn't that what you really have always wanted all your life? Pure love. Pure love. Not infatuation. Not sexuality. Not sensuality. Not some good feeling you have inside. Not some ecstasy that you experience when you're in worship. Or when you're in lust or whatever you're in. Whichever extremes that you swung your pendulum of emotion on. But haven't you always wanted just to be loved purely? God is love. And Jesus gave all because he wanted you to know he loves you. That's why he did it. Because God, my God, maybe your God too. Is it your God? Is it your God? You sure? But my God, the one that loves me, I know, loves you. He does.